Spotlight News for topic today. I want to speak from I'm not my choice, but I'm God's choice. I'm not my choice, but I'm God's choice. Amen. If we could go to Hallelujah, the book of Romans, chapter 11. What I want you to understand today is that it's, if it was up to each and every one of us in here today, we would not be the choice, or we would choose ourselves based upon our record. Everyone in here has some type of rap sheet, if you will. Everyone in here has done some things that not proud of, or done some things that we shouldn't have done. Amen. But yeah, go to the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5. These are some of the things that we are, that's in us. And if it was up to us, we would choose ourselves to be saved. Because we understand what we've done. We know our darkest secrets. We know our deepest things that we haven't told people about. The person sitting beside you don't know, hallelujah, that secret that you had. Per person sitting in front of you don't know what you used to be because if you want to be completely honest, we want everybody to know the good side of us. We want everybody to see that good person. If we, hallelujah, look at your Facebook page, you don't see people putting on their, their darkest, deepest, deepest secrets. They put the vehicle that they got. They put the master's degree that they've achieved. They put all of the accomplishments, but they don't mention the best in the hell that they were doing and that they were in before they got. Because us as a people, we want people to see the good of us. But if we want to be honest with ourselves, hallelujah, there's some nasty, deep, dark stuff that we used to be involved in, and some of us are still involved in. So we would not choose ourselves based upon our record. Because you know what you've done. Now they say but the thing about the God that we serve is that he's looking past what you've done. See, see, people judge you and you judge yourself according to your past and your present. But God looks beyond the past and the present and he's looking to the future to see what you can become. You know, Jesus saw a mess down there in Genesis, he looked at the earth, he saw a bunch of dirt, and he said, you know what? I can take that dirt, and I can make it a person. So your dirty background doesn't mean nothing to God. God wants to use you for who you're going to be. See, this is why we don't choose ourselves. This is why you can't go out there and put on a robe and Put something on your head and put a cross on your neck and say, oh, God called me to be a pastor. You can't choose yourself. Because if you choose yourself, hallelujah, most people that choose themselves, they ain't going to call something. They're just out there trying to get some type of recognition. A lot of people that go out there and try to pastor just because they feel they got an unction talk about God sitting. The Bible says that the apostle will sit. Amen. He said, how could they preach except they be sent? A lot of people don't, they ain't sent, they just win. Win on out there. And so when you choose yourself, you got to question that. That's why, you know, a lot of people say, well, I want to be a pastor. Let me tell you something. This ain't something that you just want to be. 
Can I tell you something? Me teaching to you every Sunday, free services, Wednesday night Bible study, teaching, that's the easy part. Easiest part of that is preaching. But when you have to deal with each individual person, you have people call you, you got to go to the hospital, you got to go to funerals, you got to be there for, that's that difficult part. You got to deal with different personalities. Y'all ain't saying that. So you don't say, oh, well, I'm choosing this because we don't choose ourselves, but God chooses. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then somebody say, I'm not my choice. I'm God's choice. And see, I tell you, a lot of people, when they first come to Christ, if they backslide or they go outside of the will of God, when they come back or try to come back, they say, well, I don't want to go to church really because I keep doing this. I don't want to go to church until I really get myself together. Can I be honest with you? You will never really get yourself together before you come. I'm going to wait until I'm about 25, wait until I'm about 30 to where I get myself together. Can I tell you something? You don't go to the hospital because you're fixed. You don't go in there and you jump in the hospital, yeah, check me out. Yeah. You don't go to the hospital to get no bill because you feel well. So you don't wait to come to God when you think you're ready. You come disgusted so God can use what he sees. God works with this. Yes, this is why God didn't like the Pharisees because they were dressed and looked a certain way like they were up to par and know that they were deceiving themselves. And a lot of times we try to, you know, of course try to fix ourselves up to look like we're something all these different things like that. But God ain't concerned about that external piece of it. This is why God chose people that has a heart. This is why God chose David. David out there, he out there picking up sheep nests. Out there behind the sheep. In the field, David. And God said, you know, he looked at him and said, hey, you know what? I see a king in him. And he was a little boy. Don't you know God can see past what you're in right now? And some of y'all are dealing with some issues right now. Some of y'all in your mind, you're thinking about backsliding, moving back into the world, thinking about doing this, looking at your current situation, telling yourself that you're not this, I'm not, I'm not good enough. God don't care nothing about that. God can turn, if God can turn some dirt into a heart with lungs, kidneys, muscles, blood, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. So if God can turn that dirt into a person, God can turn your mistakes and your flaws. Don't worry about your flaws and your mistakes. God can still use you. Amen. 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 Don't you know, and I'm going to get to the scripture. Don't you know, Paul, uh, where I got you now? Galatians, okay. Go to, I'm going to go back. Go to Acts chapter 8. Sometimes we get too concerned, and then, of course, people. They know your past. And when you try to do better, the first thing they want to do is bring up the past while you're trying to do better. Amen. Oh, you going to church now? And you just you just had a club last night. How are you going to church? Well, because I'm trying to get my life right. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Why you why you all of a sudden you going to church, you crying, you doing all this, and you just doing that last night. Don't worry about what I did last night. Worry about what I'm doing now. And see, and the problem is sometimes we amalgamate ourselves with individuals that can pierce in us. Try to tear us apart. I know you don't need you to go to church. You don't need you, 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 you're in this situation or you're in this condition. No, I need help. When you're looking to go get fixed or you need help, you go to a place and say, I need assistance. You broke your leg. You gonna go to the hospital and say, "Listen, I know my problem. My, my problem is this is my problem right here." And in the service, if you know you ain't right, you gonna come down off the Lord. This is my problem, and I need help. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch this. Acts chapter eight, verse one. I read. And Saul was Uh huh. Now, you got Paul 
Judea, uh, God did something to him. Go to the next chapter. Now the word. Be 
love because apostles stuck inside of certain uh, 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 stones. You had animals' bones that was in the stones. There was an indication that there was a water. Now, even when you go down there, you drive there to Tennessee today, you'll see how the mountains are set up and you have stones, but even in the stones, there's water coming out. Well, where the world is this? Don't you know, hallelujah, that the land mass of the world right now, it was just one land mass. You could drive from New York to Ethiopia. We just studied. It was one land mass, and what happened was when the flood came, it separated the continents. So now you got all these different continents, but at one time, it was just one land. Now they say nothing. So what happened, Noah. He got mentioned from God. God told Noah to build an ark to save his family. Only eight people were saved. God gave me mention known to him. But Noah had an alcohol problem. Amen. Noah was getting drunk. Don't let that happen. And somebody say, I'm chosen. chosen. Even by my record. Now, Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I'm undone. Uh huh. I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh-huh. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I dwell with folk that have problems like me. But God, you still want to use me? So if it was, if it was God, remember Moses, he led the whole nation of Israel. Six million people. But what did he say? He said, Lord, I, I can't even, I, I stutter. I got, you know, I, I got stammering tongues before they came out. <laughs> he said, I, I got a problem with my speech. God said, I don't want you to worry about that because I chose you. If it was up to us to choose ourselves, we couldn't make it because we have records and we have our flaws that we see. Amen. I don't care who you are, you got some type of flaw. I know y'all look deep and y'all look nice with these prayer rooms on, but everybody got everybody got something going on. I look nice with your ties on and your suits and all that stuff, but there's something going on. Amen. That you have a flaw. You have some type of problem, and God can use it. Why would he use Saul? Hallelujah. To be one of the greatest apostles that lived, and he was killing Christians. I would use it just so he can show you that it's not about what you've done. It's what you can become. This is why even when man was made, God said, man be king. Go down to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Two and seven, read, huh? And the Lord God for man. And the Lord God for man. Of the dust of the ground. Uh huh. And breathe into his nostrils. Breathe into his nostrils. The breath of life. life. And man did what? Be king. God is worried about what you're becoming and not what you was. Wow. Amen. We too worried about what we was. We too worried about what we've done and not worried about what God wants to do in us and what we're going to be. Because, see, the devil wants you to stay focused on what you was. Right. That's good, sir. Right. He want to remind you, oh, yeah, you remember when you were used to do this? You remember you used to steal? You remember you used to do that? You remember you used to go to Walmart and go over like you're checking out and just put something in the bag? Yes. 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 Some of y'all looking like I'm going to be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you remember you used to see that wild go to the counter? Some guys are going to your own parents' house and take their money. Yes, sir. So you have all these different things that you've done. You did all these different things. You're not proud of it, but look at you now. Look where you're at now. Look where you're at now. All the weeds you used to smoke. All the pills you used to pop. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All the 
those clubs used to shut down. The last one in there still dance. You remember what you used to be, and see, this is why you can't base your salvation off of what you was. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Put your hand and say, Lord, I'm thinking you chose me. I'm not a gift to my record. Because to be honest, if it was just based off of, you know, we just go to hell just based off of what we've done, ain't going to be no service. And if nobody, if I have nobody in no head, everybody be running around, you know, musicians up. Everybody can be in hell. Everybody burn up. Man, <laughs> Lord, I feel good. Amen. Amen. And people have, and, and the problem with the churches today is that we, the pastors do not teach people how to deal with their struggles. Amen. Oh, you out there having sex, you're going to hell. Well, and let's be honest with you now. The lifestyle that we're called to live in the church is abnormal. Like I look at funny. The way we're made up, we were born in sin. We, we came out of the sin. You don't have to tell a child to go stick her hand in the blood. She's going to do it anyway. You ain't got to tell a child to go do something that they ain't supposed to do. They're going to do it anyway. You ain't got to teach a child how to dance in music. What y'all ain't saying? When you turn on music, they all, their reaction is all that. They just start bopping all that. When my son was, he was about two years old, third music in the car, hit the head. <laughs> Don't know what the music is, but they respond for the night. Amen. So we can't look at ourselves like, you know, we can't focus on what we were and what we're currently dealing with because there is help. Amen, like. There is help. I want you to go down there to uh, First Timothy. I'm sorry, go to Psalm 139. Don't you know before you start smoking dope, God knew you was going to do it. Oh, and y'all ain't saying nothing. Before you hit that bed, oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. Before you hit that bed that wasn't your husband or your wife's bed, don't you know God knew? Y'all ain't saying that. They get quiet. When you start dealing with something like that, they get quiet. Hey, Amen. When you start doing something, God already knew you were going to do it. I'm just grateful that we in the, I'm glad we in the dispensation of grace. Because if you were still under the law, the 613 law, ain't nobody be paid. We be sold to them. Psalm 139 and 1 of. Huh? O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. God, you have searched me and you know me. Thou know my down city. You know what I'm down to. And my upright. And you know what I'm getting up, huh? Oh, thou understandest my thought. You understand. Wait a minute. You understand. Hmm. Read that again. Thou understandest the verse, Lord. Thou understandest my thoughts from far off. So when you got crazy thoughts, you have been sitting there in some crazy yeah. thing. Devil, get out of my head. What is going on here? What? Oh, y'all looking deep like you ain't never been there. Some of y'all live right now. Walk in it. Have a crazy thought that's jumping in your mind. Now see, the thing is, every thought that gets in your mind is not yours. That's right. See, Satan will get in your head, and I tell you how this word before. Devil will get while you drive, he'll tell you to go ahead and swerve off and hit the, you know, the devil one time will drop down his road here, I was calling. The devil said, let's hit a few of them just, just to see how it looks. I said, you get out of here. I'm gonna hit that one hit the call to see how see, you know, before I before I actually touched one of those, I thought they were heavy. And you know one day I, I was walking out here, I think it was the fair, and I listened up with a little light. I remember 
crying and rolling here, devil comes. Put this hit, this hit about five or six or just knock them all over. I said, devil, you get out here, you walk and knock them all over. What are you talking to me like that? So the, the devil will put stuff. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't roll over the, the driving off the bridge and don't tell you to get out of the car and jump into the water. The devil will set some crazy stuff and something else. You might as well tell the truth, you might as well tell the truth, you you too. When you saw that other person that, that did you wrong, and he said, go ahead, go ahead and slap him. Yes, hey, just, I mean, ain't nobody can see you, ain't nobody in the church, ain't nobody in the church, and the pastor ain't here, ain't nobody here. To go off over there and just slap. She did all that stuff. So the devil started reminding you everything that she done did and started telling you everything you done did and said, just, just, just hold up and slap her. She just ain't, ain't no police around. And, and, and then, so now you sit there, you looking like, oh, you about ready to go slap her. You want to sit like the devil ain't never spoke to you before. He done said something to you. Yes, so every thought that we have is not our thoughts. The devil, this is why the Bible talks about casting down wicked imagination. We look at the word imagination, the root word is image. The devil works in image. This is why certain things that happened to you back in your past like to pop up. The devil want to remind you of what happened to you. So the little, little things that happen is to come up and creep up. So the devil has to bring back the image. Oh, you got to rebuke that sign, you know, that that's my past is over. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, but all things become new. So everything I'm dealing with now has become new. Don't break up. Hallelujah. See, and, and, and the devil will do this. To put you in a bad place. You done got the lesson. So now the devil keep wanting that thing in your mind. So you get a deeper and deeper depression. Now you're in the room with, you know, tape on the window. You don't want no sunlight to come in. That's the devil working. Because the devil wants you to say, Lord, why me? What I'd like to say is, why not you? Yes, sir. Buster 3, he said he understands your thoughts, huh? Now, my head, am I lying down? Uh huh. And are with all my Wait a minute. The Bible says that God is acquainted. He's acquainted with all your ways. You know what that means? You did it enough time for him to know exactly what you're going to do. Even when David messed up and slept with Bathsheba, put her husband out there in war so he could die, God already knew. Don't you know before Adam ate, God already knew. Pastor, what you mean? Well, the Bible says that the lamb was slain before the foundation. Oh, that makes sense. So before the world was founded, the lamb was already slain. God had a backup plan already. Don't you know when you create a computer, hallelujah, they automatically come with some type of virus protection. So, you know, just in case this thing mess up, I got to back up this. So because the first Adam messed up, the last Adam was the backup. Y'all ain't saying that. The Bible talks about the last Adam being Jesus. He stepped right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the same thing that happened to the first Adam, the first Adam, hallelujah, Eve came out as the real. The last Adam of Jesus was poked on the cross and the church came out for real. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And this is why the church is considered the bride of Christ because we are his real. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Watch this. He says, for and, uh, and are acquainted with all my ways. Not some of my ways. Every way that you have, whether it's good or bad, pretty or ugly, God knows all of them. 
Amen. But don't try to, you know, make yourself look like you're something that you're not. And you say, Lord, the Lord is still working on you. Don't try to present yourself like you just, <laughs> God ain't saying nothing. Sometimes we like to present ourselves like Holy Rose, that we struggling, I mean, we go on the salvation by a little bread. And we make it look so good. We make everybody take over that. And she, I mean, she just prayed heaven down. She must got an awesome relationship. I'm going to be like her. And don't even know that mother message. She, she done fell all the way apart. She was getting back. Y'all ain't saying nothing. She said, oh, she praying real good. That must be, she, she a praying woman. She got a wrong woman. She look a real praying woman struggling too. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why it was very important that that woman that had an issue with blood, she wasn't concerned about touching these. She said, that wasn't just being touched a little him. So we all said, listen, as long as I'm touching the hip of that salvation, I can't. Yeah. 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 So we all in here right now and y'all been holding on. But I'm going to encourage you, just don't let go. You can get, you hold on to the thread and say, Lord, if this let me grab the other hand. Let me, let me try to climb on. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. If you hold on to a thread, please don't let that thread go. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hold on. And somebody said, hold on, don't let go. Yes. See, and this is what happens if you're holding on. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, look to the hills from which come to help. So while I'm holding on, I got to look up. See, the Bible says, forget those things which are. You probably want to say, so when you hold it up, if you look back and pull it up, it's going to pull, pull you down. So you got, I just need 45 of y'all. If you continue to hold on to what you got and say, Lord, I just need your help, God will pull you over. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read. For there is not a word in my tongue. But no, oh Lord, thou knowest it lost yet. I said, he said, you know my whole vocabulary. So some of y'all are still got your cussing. Lord, I'm about to get in trouble now. Still got your cuss words in that vocabulary. Last no. Amen. Lord, we got quiet real quick. They got still got a whole row. Y'all all right with me? I'm with you. I, that cousin spirit that jumped on you just start laying out, just start flipping all of them out. And then shoot a bird and talk about, well, I ain't say nothing. Don't you know, you know something called body language? You are saying something. Don't say nothing. So you see somebody and you don't say nothing about your mouth and you go like this, what that mean? Is that saying something? All right. So you might go like this. What that mean? I'm going. Y'all don't act like y'all. I ain't that old. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You throw up these, that means I'm out. They say shoot the deuces, huh? You know, that means I'm out of here. So when you stick that new thing up, you know what that means. That's a word. Y'all ain't saying that's a strong word. Yeah. Strong too. <laughs> so don't sit there and say that, you know, because I stick my finger up, that ain't no word. Yeah, that's, a, that's you say up. And they even got a language called sign language. So you still speak. But I ain't never seen it as a Bible where it says you can't cuss. No, okay. Go down to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 4. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 and 29. Let no Let no what? Uh huh. Communication. Come out of your mouth. But that which is good. So now, if you cut somebody out, is that good for you? 
Amen, life. I'm with you. I'm with you. Tear them down. And them curse words hurt. You hear you hear somebody cuss it's like punch you in the chest. And then they like to categorize them. All of them cuss. I don't get that about, but I ain't seen a strong one. And rather was strong than life. It's still coming. I didn't, it's not really, it wasn't, it wasn't a hard one. It wasn't a harsh one. Amen. Go to Psalm 69. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Let's say it one more time. Say, Lord, help me. All right, 69. Start at four, huh? Save oh, start at one, huh? Save me, oh God, for the words that come in unto my soul. Uh huh. Lift your 
hand and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Go to Jeremiah. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, I know I might be getting on y'all nerves at this point. Oh, no, you're fine, sir. Jeremiah chapter 1. And verse number 7. I'll go to six, I'm sorry. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Jeremiah is challenging God because he chose him to do a work. So he said, Lord, I'm not this perfect person that you're looking for because I'm still a child. Don't you know that there's a king in the Bible that was about seven years old? God ain't worried about how old you are. When he starts seeing young people ministering the gospel, and he said, I, I didn't know you were a pastor. You, you don't look old enough to be a pastor. There's no qualifications of age like it is being a president. Yeah. And then the president, you got to be about 35 years old to be a president. That ain't the same thing that the church. God used whoever one of you. And this is why it shows you that it's not an election. You don't elect people in the church. There's no such thing as electing a pastor. A vote for the pastor. Is that the people's church? The God's church. Is that the democracy? And people will make the church a democracy. I don't know a certain church that vote for a pastor. They put their bed in, you know what I'm saying? They put their bed in there and say, all right, well, he talked to us pretty good, or he preached pretty good. And they sit there, and the deacon, they control, they say, well, we're going we to choose that person. Be. That ain't God's church because that, listen, that's a people's church. It's God's church. God set up the young church. Let me give you the scripture. Go down there and say, Jesus, chapter 4. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Ephesians 4. All right. Start at verse number 11. Oh, wait, that, hold on. Go to mine. Uh-huh. And he gave some. And he. Ooh. And who? He gave some what? Uh-huh. And some prophets. Uh-huh. And some evangelists. Uh-huh. And some pastors. And teachers. For the perfection of the saints. For the perfection of the saints. So if I'm elected or burdened for a voter for a pastor, the church can't be perfected. Amen. Amen. I can't sit there both say, I, I want I want Davon. Everybody that's just favor for Davon to be pastor. Say I. That's crazy. That ain't scriptures. Now let me say a bunch. I know I'm at the book. That's all I can back, really. I don't need no amen. I got the book to back. Yes, sir. Read, huh? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come into the unity of the faith. Until we all come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed and crowed, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, of the sake of men, and cunning practice. There's individuals that got false doctrines and their lives waiting to deceive people. I'm not talking about doctrine this morning, but just wanted to say that. Amen. Amen. So you'll see that 
God chooses his church. We did not choose ourselves. We can't choose ourselves, but it is God that chooses us. The Bible says in the book of Romans, y'all give me five more minutes. Romans chapter 11, verse number 2. God hath not cast away his what? Why? Because he foreknew them. Oh, I knew you before you went, hallelujah, to Midtown. I knew you, hallelujah, before you went to El Sam or Margarita night. I knew you before you did all of these things. So he said, I'm not going to cast you away. Aren't you glad you're not a cast? God said, I'm not going to cast you away because I know who you're going to be. Outside of the dope dealing, outside of the gang banging, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Outside of the things that I did, I knew who you were. Oh, you ought to lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for knowing me. Oh, yeah, he knew everything that you were before you came or became who you are now. And God is still making this is why the Bible says that he's the potter and we are the clay. Hallelujah. Because every now and again, God, and this is why we say that God touched us. See, every now and again, you need God just to touch you a little bit to, to finish molding you and, and, and finish put this piece where it's supposed to go. God said, I am the potter and you are the clay. How many of you have been touched by God? Oh, I wish I had 25 witnesses here with me. When I've been touched by God, it don't matter where I've been, who I was with, God said, I'm still working on you. Every now and again, I'm just going to touch you and continue to mold you and make you what I want you to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God ain't done with me yet. So I don't want you to give up on me either. Oh yeah, when I start looking crazy, just touch me and pray for me and say, Lord, just touch it. Don't give up on me just yet. Just ask God to bless me and to keep me. Don't roll your eyes at me because I fell. Just pray for me. When you see me falling, don't talk about me. Just pray for me. When you see me messing up, don't turn your back on me. Just pray for me. Just push me. I was a half of y'all. I'm still clay. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, God is working on me. Uh, just like he's still working on you. Yeah, don't get too cute and don't get too snooty and put your nose up like God. Just got too finished. You're not a finished product just yet. God is still working. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh, grab somebody by the hand and say, God is still working. God is working on you. People be so quick to give up on you. Oh, you keep messing up. I'm not about to deal with you. No, baby. Don't give up on me just yet. Just pray for me just a little while longer. You remember when you, you was hard-headed before? You remember when you kept going out before? But then you got yourself together. Don't forget about me. Better yet, don't leave me. Make me come with you. If it looks like I'm struggling behind, just put me along with you. I need you and you need me. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Look at your man and say, we need each other. If it looks like you're falling, I'm going to pick you up. If it looks like you're sliding low, I'm going to give you the slip resistant shoes. Hey, Lord, I wish I had somebody here. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Don't give up on me just yet. Flaws and all are still chosen by God. Mistakes and all, I'm still chosen by God. Oh yeah, I used to smoke weed, but I was chosen while I was smoking it. I just came out the back, Lord, I wish I had somebody. I just came out of darkness into the marvelous light. I was still messed up. God is shaping me. He's molding me. He's making me. Lord, when you get a chance, just make me over. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody 
and say, God is still making me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't give up now. God came in a thousand percent. God came there, hallelujah, to get the ones that was broken to be fixed. The disciples would ask him, hallelujah, the Pharisees would ask him a question. They said, why are you out here with the publicans and with the, with the sinners? He said, well, why would I be over, I'm paraphrasing, why would I be over there with the saints? I need to go down here, hallelujah, because I'm God. I need to go work on my people that don't have it all together. This is why we come to church because we know, hallelujah, throughout the week there's going to be some issues. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I see we have to understand that we're in a race and we're in a vehicle driving to get where God wants us to be. And hallelujah, throughout this race you're making a flat tire. Y'all ain't saying nothing to you. You may run out of gas. You may need an oil change too. You come by, hallelujah, redeeming love, church of God, the Bible way to get you a new tire. I wish I had somebody with me. Uh, you go down there to redeem the love, say hallelujah. I need to get my oil changed. Hallelujah. I'm putting some miles on it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I see what happens is that this is why God is going to take us from mortal to immortality. Because he said, you know what? You have a lot of miles on you. You have a lot of miles on you while you was on earth. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you another body. Hallelujah. You can't put no miles on this one. Y'all ain't saying why? Listen, I'm going to show you something because the world, they get tapped into what God is going to do. You got cars out now, hallelujah. You got the Tesla out. Hallelujah. You don't need no engine to move you. You, you, know, I have 25 of you don't need, hallelujah, no oil change. You don't need no transmission fluid. All you need is a computer. Lord, have mercy. And that computer is synonymous to spirit. See, thank Lord, I wish I had somebody. Before I bought my car, Hallelujah, before I bought my vehicle a couple years ago, I thought about getting a Tesla, but it scared me a little bit because the guy said, well, if you fly somewhere, your car can meet you where you're going. Just as, hallelujah, when the rapture takes place, there's a body waiting for us. Well, I just need 25 of y'all to read your Bible. There is a body that's waiting for us to take hold to. Somebody shout hallelujah. So God is taking us from the moral state to immortality. You done had too many miles on you while you was down on earth. Oh had to pull you out of that body and put you in another. Yes, you did too much stuff, you, your car fax is messed up. You done had too many accidents. Too many fender benders. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Huh? Too many wrecks. So God said, I'm going to give you a new vehicle. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And this is why we're in Christ now. Hallelujah. We are in, hallelujah, a temp vehicle. Don't you know when you take your car to the shop, and I take my car to get oil changed, they give me a loan. And so what God said, hallelujah, as once you've been baptized in my name, you put on me, I'm going to loan you this body till you get your new one. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So God gives you the loaner, which is called the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And now I'm in this body. Hallelujah. Until my new body arrived for me to get into. Oh, y'all shout hallelujah in here. And I'm so glad I'm amongst the ones that are chosen to be called up. Can I be honest with you? Everybody ain't chosen. Bible says many. Many are called. But it's a small amount that's going to be chosen. Because, can I be honest with you? Everybody not going to pick up the phone. No, you know when you don't pick up the phone, it's called ignore it. A lot of people will ignore the gospel, ignore the truth. And God is calling them to salvation. And he said, okay, well, if they can't receive the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they can't, they don't want to be uh, receptive to the apostles' doctrine. He said, well, they can't be chosen. They're just called. And this is why the people that are called can walk away from the church. Amen. You can hear it? Say, oh, it sounds good. 
And once they get to a part in the scripture that they don't like, they say, for me. You were called. The chosen to see stuff in there. Yes, sir. Say, man, that's what that say. like an ugh. They say, well, we put a band aid. I'm going to keep on, yes, keep on going. Yes, I get stabbed by the scripture. See, the Bible says that the word is a swamp. Two edged swamp. The Bible says it's quick. And it's hot. It's sharp. And so what happens is, hallelujah, the call comes. Watch this and I'm going. The call chosen comes. And all the call and the chosen stand together. And what happens is, the sword comes out. And what happens is, the sword go out and it starts slicing. And see, the, the call, they get cut and they back. But the chosen, they get cut and then they remember by his stripes. Yes, I wish I had 25 of y'all with me. The call will get slashed and say, well, I can't take this bleeding. But the chosen to get cut say, well, by your stripes, I'm already here. I was here before I got cut. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Can't get into a position where we are. Chosen or not by, or we can't be chosen by our record. But God chooses us. And it's not by who we were. God chose us because he said there's something. He said there's something in him. There's something in Brother Lee's eyes. So he don't preach the gospel. He listen to it.
Israel. I'm married to you because there was some blood still on And God said, I can't take him out this yet because if I come or if I kill him, he will die with my blood on Aren't you glad even when you stepped outside of the will of God that God still, God still saw his blood on you? Even when you fail, God saw his blood. Even when you were in sin, God saw his blood. Israel did a lot of things. God should have killed them. God said, you know what? I see blood. If there's a murder coming in here to kill, hallelujah. Thank you for choosing me. Does anyone in the night pray? 